It's always cool to catch up with someone we featured in a story here on Crossroads many years ago. Even better to discover they've got a new story to share with us. Well, next we go to Eads in West Tennessee to revisit the miniature world of artist Simon Jackson. We drove deep into rural Fayette County for our first visit with Simon Jackson back in 1992. The modest, unassuming artist was fixated on recreating miniature versions of barns, homes, and other old buildings in his homeland. The more worn and blemished by time, the more aesthetically interesting. It's a real rewarding feeling to finish one. We just sit back and just look at it. The details of his work were remarkable, but his initial goals were not fame and fortune. In fact, one of his first creations was a gift for his mother. She was so pleased with it. And when I finally finished it, I gave it to her. And she loved it. She kept it until she passed. Simon's talent was equaled by his creative use of simple materials. Wire from an extension cord could be transformed into trees. A piece of stereo cable converted into a garden hose. Corrugated pieces of an old tin can were perfect for making an old metal roof. He painstakingly built chimneys brick by tiny brick with concrete and constructed buildings with real tiny nails. Since our initial visit, Simon's works have found many new homes, even in prominent museums. He's won awards and invitations to art shows far away from Fayette County. It's just amazing. I've had people that come up and say that they've been all over the world and they've never seen work as good as this. And it just, you know, it makes me feel good. It motivates me to do better. I reunited with Simon Jackson on a piece of land he just bought for his future home and workshop. He's taken a break from his miniature layouts in favor of a new little challenge, one inspired by memories of his father. But he served in World War II, and I had a lot of respect for any military people that, you know, served in the military, including right now. And, you know, I said one day I was going to see what I could do with, you know, guns and stuff like that. I just wanted to try something different, just to challenge myself to see how far could I go in this. And I had no idea that, you know, a lot of times you have talents that you don't realize you have until you get involved. Simon's new series of classic rifles will no doubt appeal to collectors of military arms history. This frame trio features a 1908 American Springfield along with two German sniper rifles. And a model 19. Like the buildings he's made, he creates each historic firearm, more like this Thompson machine gun, without any special tools. Each piece begins with a gun stock made from one of several hardwoods he gets from all over the world. It must have character, and it must be tough enough. Every time I cut a stock out, I would test it to see if I can break it. And if I can break it, I won't use that wood anymore. But if I can't break it, that's what I go with for my stocks because I want my stocks to be strong. Then once it's cut out, you take your pocket knife and you cut your edges down and then you take some uh, 150 or 100 grit sandpaper and start sanding on it and get it smooth. Then you go down to another size and sand it and then you steel wool and after you put your urethane on it. And then I go with a zero, triple zero steel wool and just polish it up, let it dry, then I go over it again to get that slick finish. He uses brass tubing for the barrel of each rifle, sanded to the right size and shape before real gun bluing is applied. Details even include a functional scope with crosshairs. Uh, I guess yeah. the obvious question is, are there real bullets in those things? Oh no, sir. I made a promise to myself <laughs> to not make Great. anything that shoot. <laughs> because I don't want anybody to get hurt with anything that I make. Simon has about 50 more classic firearms on his to-do list, along with many other miniature challenges. But everything I do really is a challenge. I'm constantly challenging myself. I'm constantly seeing just how far I can go and how far I can take this. Before leaving, Simon wanted to show me yet another tiny, more amusing collection. These smoking pipes he made. And although he's a non-smoker, Simon offered a little demonstration. <laughs> it works. 
That's the way Dad used to do it. <laughs> I used to watch too many mornings. It was nice to visit with Simon Jackson after all these years, and great to discover his creative miniature mission is still unrelenting. I think when they put me in the grave, I have a pair of plies in this hand and a pencil in this one. <laughs> <laughs> There we go.